Okay, hello everybody. It is one o'clock, so we're going to get started. I'm Maureen Babb. And I'm Angela Osterreicher. And we are librarians here at the WRHA Virtual Library. So today we're going to be talking about fabulous fabulous health statistics and where to find them. Um, so you may be familiar with some of the sources that we'll be talking about already. Hopefully some of them will be new to you and uh, hopefully you'll get something enjoyable out of this webinar. Um, as I mentioned before, we will be monitoring the chat box as the uh, webinar goes on. So if you have any questions along the way, feel free to ask them. Um, and we will be doing Q&A at the end. So uh, today we'll be briefly introducing you to the virtual library and then briefly introdu introducing you to what health statistics are. Uh, then we'll demonstrate how to find health statistics using the virtual library itself itself and then we'll introduce you to key places um, outside of the virtual library where you can find health statistics some of which we link to in our uh, sources so the virtual library for those of you who are unfamiliar with us and what we do uh, we provide library service to the uh, wrha staff eligible community care homes and personal uh or sorry, eligible community health agencies and personal care homes. Got that a bit backwards. Um, we provide a lot of access to electronic resources, so databases like Medline and CINAHL, and we'll engage in services for you, such as literature searching, uh, document delivery of any resource we don't have direct access to, and education and training sessions like this one. Um, we'll also do education and training sessions on demand on topics you might be interested in, and we're, we're willing to come out and visit you to do them as well. You don't have to sit in front of a computer and watch us this way. Um, so to begin, just a very brief introduction, what are health statistics? So they're kept by a variety of organizations and governments, um, and they inform evidence-based policy making. They're used to track diseases, to monitor changes, to see in the impact of policy changes, to understand risk factors, and to assess the quality of healthcare and healthcare provisions. There are four typical things that are measured. So there's correlates, um, so risk factors that impact health, social, economic, and physical factors, or personal behaviors. So things like smoking, or air pollution, or income, or education, how those affect health. Um, it monitors conditions, so the incidence, the number of new cases of a disease, or the prevalence of a condition, the amount of that disease or condition in a population. Um, it also looks at care, uh, who has access to care, what's the quality of care. This can be used to spot inequities in care according to geographic location or according to, say, uh, uh, racial makeup um, or uh, it can also look at costs, so the cost of healthcare and the cost of having poor health. Um, and I will pass it over to Angela to talk about finding health statistics. Okay, so if you go to the next slide, please. So finding health statistics on our webpage. Uh, this is our webpage. Uh, from our webpage, you go to find information. Uh, we have the uh, tab at the top there if you click on that and then click on toolkits so if you click on that that brings you to this page where we've designed several different toolkits toolkits in different subject areas uh, and it's the idea is to bring the resources together that we have in one easy place for you to search and if you click on special topics you will find a uh, an abbreviated toolkit, a uh, small toolkit, and statistics is one of them. So here we have uh, resources, ebooks uh, on how to find statistics, how to use statistics, and then some links to uh, resources like KaiHi, OECD, which we'll be talking about in a moment. Uh, these are things that we put together sometimes in conjunction with members such as yourselves and we're very happy uh, to build new ones or to Expand revise ones, yeah. ones that we have. So if you have any suggestions, feel free. We're quite open to hearing from you. Mm -hmm. And I also noticed that I didn't include the address for our library site on the slides. So it's just wrhavirtuallibrary.ca. Yes. So some of the key resources. Uh, the first one 
is that we'd like to talk about is CAIHI. CAIHI stands for the Canadian Institute for Health Information. Uh, they collect information from across Canada, both federal, provincial, as well as other partners, hospitals, so forth. And they have rigorous data collection standards. Uh, from CAIHI, you can get both raw data sets as well as reports. And in some cases, a lot of cases, it's freely available, but sometimes you have to actually request the data and pay for it. So it's uh, this is the place to come if you're looking for Canada's health system or the health of Canadians. Uh, it's public health data, and they often aggregate the data. They aggregate the data at a federal level, and they often, as I mentioned previously publish them as a report. An example of a recent one is patient experience in Canadian hospitals. Mm -hmm. And I do want to note that uh, the Manitoba Health has a website on their intranet um, that does some additional work with uh, the Canadian Institute for Health Information and Statistics. Mm -hmm. I didn't include it in the slides because it's not something that you can access unless you work for Manitoba Health, but it is there and potentially you could contact them to see that. I know there had been interest in making that site public, but I don't believe it is yet. Yeah, so that's the URL for Kai High. So, no, that's okay. If we click on that, go to that, this is what their web page looks like. And we are going to look at just the access and data reports. So if we click on that box, this is the page that it brings you to. So from this, you can search in the toolbar for specific uh, keywords. The side toolbar allows you to limit uh, to a primary theme, such as uh, access and wait times. Residential care would be another example. Health workforce. You can limit by file type, by province, and by year. Uh, you can't see those on the screen, but off to the left there, if you scroll further down, uh, as we said, the content is mostly freely available. Uh, also available, uh, things that Kai Hai puts together is your health system. Perhaps you've heard of that. Those are indicators for specific hospitals, cities, regions, provinces. It just tells you how well Canada's health system is performing. How healthy Canada's oh, health system is. Yes. Uh, and... That is easily found on, if you just Google your health system, you'll find that. They also pr produce wait times, which is quite uh, frequently requested from the hospitals. Uh, and again, they have a resource for that. And again, you can just Google wait times. Uh, their URL is waittimes.kaihai.ca. And they also have quick stats, uh, which you can see on their uh on this web page here uh, for interactive tables and Excel sheets on a variety of topics. So, uh, as we said, in some cases, the information is not pre available, so you do need to request it, and you can do that by hitting the uh, access data and reports and make a request. And we won't take you through that. Process, no, no, and there but, is a cost for it, so, yeah. and they give some of the pricing information there. So another uh, resource is Stats Canada. This is the place to go for fast and free resources. Uh, they collect data via the census and surveys, it includes health and population data. And again, they provide raw data, reports, and also visual visualizations. So that's the URL for Stats Can. And they have recently changed their uh, web page, so we're still becoming familiar with it a bit as well. Uh, oh, did you want me to? No, no, no. Uh, so uh, you can at the top toolbar there. We're going to show you a couple of ways to get to information from the uh, StatsCan website. So the one place that you can go to is on the top toolbar there. You have subjects. So if we click on that. That takes you to this web page. Well, there's actually a web page in between, but oh, I've selected okay. health from a yes. list of subjects. Yes. Uh, so we get to a web page, and then from there we can select health statistics, health, and that brings you to this page, just, is just health statistics. And again, they have various uh, fine data on more specific 
granular information on health statistics. So for instance, if we click on life expectancies and deaths, you come to this web page. So here you can browse through it. You can see, uh, you can click on all the resources. You can limit it to just the data, which is tables or analysis, which is uh, stats and brief and reports. There are filters, again, on the left-hand side that limit by table, stats and brief, or reports again. You can limit by geography, by survey, or statistical program, or even by just the latest content, remove all the archived materials as well. Yeah, and in general, with both Statistics Canada and every other site we'll be talking on here, the analyses and the reports are the they've put the data together in a way that looks really nice that you can see what's in there really quickly. The tables are, well, they're messy. They're Excel yeah. sheets, right? So yeah. you may or may not want to wade through them. If you're doing a research project, that might be exactly what you need. So mm -hmm. be aware of your yeah. data needs yeah. as you're going yeah. So another way to get to that information, uh, going back to the main page, uh, from the main page, you can click on access our data, which is is found a little bit if you're on the main page it's just halfway down or you can click the data button yeah, at the top or there. you can click the data button at the top and basically from here you can browse anything or again you can select subject area just health as a subject so the reason we come here is you can see more categories and this is where you can get data visualization so you can see the tables profiles of a community or region, thematic maps, public use, microdata, and data vis visualization. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the main page as well, you can get access to the census data. I just wanted to mention, mention that as well. So these were just a few points that we were showing you. We haven't browsed all of the Stats Canada webpage. There's a lot of it in the yeah, There's quite a bit. Gets, so yeah. we just want a couple of entry points for you yeah. there. Yeah, we only have a half hour with you. So, um, And the census data is both the current census and they have historical data yeah. back to, I believe, 1991 online. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, up next is the Center for Disease Control, which is American-based, um, but it's still a very good resource, especially for, unsurprisingly, disease control. <laughs> um, uh, and it has a section of it, the National Center for Health Statistics, or the NCHS, um, and it includes data from vital statistics and surveys. You get here, you get something like this. Apparently, they're celebrating 15 years of quick stats, so that's exciting. Um, you can see the different types of information at the bottom there, population surveys, vital records, provider surveys, uh, some historical analysis. Um, you can also go to the, so that's the data collection system. You can see in that sort of middle of the page toolbar, there's a data and tools section. Um, so I'm going to click on that. If you go to data and tools, you can see the stuff here. There's, uh, it's been sorted into some areas, but you can see there's data sets that you can access directly. There's stuff for the general public, which is more of those reports that have been put together in a, in a comprehensive way. Um, there's stuff for students and librarians for outreach, but you're not librarians, so you don't need to. Um, so for instance, if we go into the uh, general public resource, you can see there's, I, I won't click through or pretend to click through all the pages, but one of the things that it can take you to is health for the United States. And so you can see that it tells you, uh, you can find data on various subjects. And if you click open that, it'll show you different things for different disease conditions or for different uh, areas, or you can find data on a population subgroup. Um, I strongly recommend poking around, seeing what's here. Uh, there is quite a bit of information. Um, we're, um, but I'm going to just go through and say, this is a good place to find data. Here's another good place to find data. We'll, so we'll talk through a few more. Um, the, WR, the, the WHO, the World Health Organization, is another good one. Of course, it's a global focus, being the World Health Organization. It has data, facts, sheets, statistics, publications, and you can also search by themes, diseases, indicators, and countries. Um, the website is who.int. Um, you get there, it looks like this. Um, 
And if you click that health topics button at the top, you'll see there's a specific section for data. Now there's also fact sheets, which is one of those, it's put together the data in a way that looks really nice, that's simple, that you can hand out to people or that you can put up in your office. Um, but we're going to focus on the data for today. So if you go to the data section, you'll see this, this great page and it's only show, like I've only got the top snapshot here. So this list of, themes that you're interested in goes on and on there's there's many more of them or you can also uh, do a keyword search to see what's in there um, so i clicked on malaria you get something like this again this is just the top of the page but it's providing you with a report a simple way of doing it but if you uh, scroll down you'll see the resources that they use to correlate this data as well so you can access that that way you can also um, if you see the bar there at the top on the far, or not on the top, sorry, in the middle, on the far right, there's data search written, the white toolbar. Um, and so if you do a data search, you can search their data sets and um, their, their data reports uh, for a topic. So when I did a search for malaria, that provided me with 41 results, not just that nice correlated page that we saw before. Um, Another one is the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or OECD. Uh, this is a website that has a much broader scope than just health. It's also a global focus. Um, and again, it has data sets available. The website is there at the bottom, data.oecd.org. Um, and if you take a look, so you can see here about how much broader the topic is. The real GDP forecast is the first thing that you see when you go to their data site. Um, and there is more to the OECD organization, which is why if you want the data, you just go directly to the data page. Um, so you'll see in the top there, there's browse by topic or country. Um, in this case, I have chosen to demonstrate what it looks like when you browse by topic, but country works fine too. So this little toolbar pops up and there's a specific section just for health. Uh, so we'll take a look at what's showing up there. You can see there's topic aspects that talk about healthcare use, healthcare equipment, health risks, health status. And then you can scroll down and see specific things. And it's just sort of a list of all their data that they have on, on the health topics. But you can also do a search up in the top right-hand corner there to search through all the data. Um, so you don't have to be scrolling through everything they have. Um, to give you a sense of what it looks like when you find something, we'll open up the child vaccination rates. Um, you can see they've got a chart here. You can download the data so that you don't have to be looking at, looking at it on the OECD website. Um, there's also down at the bottom uh, variables that you can control. So right now it's showing us the diphtheria, tetanus, and uh, pertussis, as well as the measles vaccine, but you can decide that, oh no, you're only interested in the measles vaccine and click on that. Or you can select for certain countries or for certain years. And so you can play around with the data in a very interactive way, which I like, mm -hmm. but I like playing around with charts. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so if you do, I talked about the search up in the right-hand corner there. So if I do a search for measles, uh, you can see that there are quite a few uh, different results. So you've got you can filter by type, you can filter by indicators or by database or by publication. What they mean by databases in this case is those data sets, those messy tables. Uh, well, I guess they're not messy, but they're they're not as nice to look at. They, they take work to look at. Um, uh, but there's also publications coming out. Um, so you can see that, you know, health at a glance, OECD indicators. So measles is going to be a part of that. Um, and there's, there's more filters on the side there that I have not included in this screenshot. Um, so one of the other ones that might be less familiar, um, and it's certainly not global, it's specifically related to Manitoba, is the Manitoba Center for Health Policy, which is hosted here at the University of Manitoba. Um, and so it contains administrative registry and survey data and other data about the residents of Manitoba specifically. Um, so it's not just healthcare, it also includes things like education, like social and families, justice, and registries. All the data in it has been de-identified, so it's basically anonymous. Um, 
and the data is to be used by academics, researchers, clinicians, students, and government staff. Um, but the data isn't openly available. If you go to the website, which we'll be walking through what that looks like, uh, you'll see that what data is available, but you can't ac actually access that data without doing a request for access, and you need to so you'll need to talk to the Manitoba Centre for Health Policy team and you'll need to submit a proposal for access. I'll talk a little bit more about what's entailed in that going forward. And you will be required assessment. So the Research Ethics Board at the University of Manitoba or a, an equivalent body at your organization. Um, the website is long and complicated, so I recommend just looking up and, and it'll be one of the first hits that comes up at or it should be. Everybody's Google is a little bit different because of their search history, but um, so this is what the website looks like. You can see there's quite a bit here. There's workshops, there's overview, there's courses that they teach, there's students' projects, there's information on the research that they themselves do. What we're interested in right now is the data repository over on the left-hand side there. Um, and we'll only be looking at a few of those things, specifically the data list and applying for access. Um, so if we take a look at the data list, this is what you have. You've got a great big long list. You can scroll down and down, but you can see all this information about bone mineral density or about Canadian primary care sentinel service networks. And it shows you the, the years that it's collected, 1990 to 2017, 1995 to 2017. Um, and many of these are still being collected and they'll just show you the most recent year that's been uploaded. Um, so if you click on any one of those titles, it, you'll be taken to an area that shows you a lot of metadata. What is this collection? What is it showing you? Where is it coming from? So you can get a sense of whether or not it's useful for you for your study. Um, now, if you decide, oh, I really want that bone min mineral density data, that's really important to me. Then you go back to that main page and you click on applying for access. Now this is what it looks like to apply for access. So it's it's a, a long process. I'd make sure that in your project um, that you're budgeting time both for you to put together the proposal and for the proposal to be reviewed by the people at the Manitoba Centre for Health Policy and by your local research ethics board. Um, so uh, you can see you need to do a research proposal, which develops a proposal. There's a feasibility assessment by MCHP. Um, you have to submit a bunch of documentation, and there's an MCHP accreditation requirement. And then there are approvals. Um, you have to sign a researcher agreement. And then there's uh, project initiation analysis and data extraction. So a lot of that will involve conversations with the MCHP team. Um, it's a lot of work, I've done it before, um, but it's quality data, and if it's what you need, this is a great place to look for it. Um, and then our final resource that we're going to talk about today is relatively new-ish, um, which is the Google Dataset Search. So uh, Google has, much like Google Scholar, they've put together a way to search for specific types of information. In this case, it's data sets, those tables that I was talking about before. Um, now, this is data sets of all sorts, um, but it includes health data. And if you're just if you're just not finding what you're looking for at the WHO or the OECD, and you're like, man, this is really specific, uh, but maybe somebody wrote a paper on it or two people wrote a paper on it and they've chosen to publish their data sets, this is the way to find it. Um, and in order to be findable by Google, uh, the data sets have to reach a certain metadata standard. So right now, there aren't as many data sets in there as there could be because they're not reaching that metadata standard. They haven't put together all the information in the, the metadata, the back end of the data, the data about the data as they, as they could have. Um, and uh, Google Dataset Search will only find the stuff that's been put together in that certain way. Um, now, one thing with that is that anything that is structured in that way can be found by the Google Dataset Search, which means that anything, like 
be cognizant of what you're looking for in this search because it's not a curated list. It's just a web crawler going and saying, this looks like a data set, this looks like a data set, this looks like a data set. If I did the metadata correctly, then I could, you know, make up a complete data table and then stick it up on like Maureen's cruddy data sets and put it up online and Google would find it. So um, put on your assessment hats carefully when you're looking at this one. Consider the source and consider the quality of the data that you're actually looking at once you have it in your hands. Is it complete? Is it ready to go? Um, so the website for this is https datasearch.research.google.com um, and it is pretty straightforward looking, uh, <laughs> data set search. Um, and there's more information about what the data set search is, what the metadata standards are, if you click on that learn more at the bottom there. Um, but if you do a search, so I did a search for diabetes, and okay, what's here, over 100 data sets have been found. You can see at the top there, there's uh, filters that you can apply, updated date, download format, usage rights. Now that's something to watch out for because some are, say, not allowed for commercial use. So if you're doing a commercial project, then you can't be using this data set. Um, you can limit it to freely, free to use data sets there at the top as well. Um, and so I've selected one here, emergency hospital uh, admissions for diabetes, and that's from the UK government. Um, and you can see that it's, for, you know, who's done it, okay, well, the Lincolnshire uh, county Council, and there's quite a bit of information in this one. Some of those earlier ones, there's very limited metadata information, uh, probably the least they could get away with to have it still be findable. Um, I strongly recommend poking around this area, particularly if you're looking for a sort of obscure topic. Um, and it gets better every day as more organizations start encouraging researchers to publish their data sets, first of all, and encouraging them to publish uh, or and using those metadata standards that I talked about earlier that makes them findable. Uh, so that is the end of our presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, we're just on time, so we've still got time for questions. Uh, so feel free to ask away in the chat. Um, uh, if you have any questions that are longer, you can always email us. Um, and we would also like to plug our newsletter here. We have a newsletter that we send out once a month that tells you about all the exciting things that are going on at the library and sometimes more broadly than the library. Um, we send it out about once a month and we will not spam you. And uh, we'll make these slides available to everyone yep. so that uh, you can have it as a resource. Yep. And definitely give us your suggestions for new topics or yeah. if we need to expand on this statistics yeah. webinar. Yeah. There's only a short amount of time when we threw a lot of information at you, but not in a lot of detail. So Yes. Yeah. And like we gave in this webinar just the briefest introductions to a lot of those sites. There's more on there than, than we had time to discuss. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just mute ourselves for now. Uh, feel free to ask any questions, and uh, we'll answer them as we see them come in. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Okay, so we have a question and I just need to actually find where the question is. Sure. Um, okay, apparently we have a hand raised from one of the participants, but I can't actually see a, a question from you. Um, oh, maybe in the question section? No. Uh, so to the attendee, uh, Gachiri, Gachiri. Gachiri, who has your hand raised. If you, you'll see at the bottom of your screen, there's a chat box. If you have a question, if you could just type it in there, then we'll actually see it. Or maybe you're just waving. Or maybe you're just waving, in which case. <laughs> in which case we'll wave back. Yeah.
Okay, so it's 1.30. Uh, we haven't actually seen any questions, so we're going to close this off, um, unless one of you really quickly jumps in with, no, wait, I'm still typing, um, which I don't think anybody's doing. Uh, so unfortunately, we can't see if you're typing or not. Um, so we are going to log off. If, you, if we've cut off any of your questions, again, do feel free to send us an email um, or give us a call, and we'll do our best to answer it for you. Uh, thank you again for joining us. Hope to see you at future education sessions. And again, we will be sending out these slides to attendees. And this is recorded. Yes. So you can always revisit it or if someone else wanted to see it and, and missed out because they were busy. You, yeah. This will be up on our website next week. Or probably tomorrow. Ideally oh, okay. tomorrow. <laughs> um, yes. So thank you again and have a great rest of your day. Take care. Bye. Uh, how do I end this? I guess it's just two.